நமாமி சின்மயம் தேவம் சத்குரும் பிரம்ம வித்வரம் வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கம்சானோரமர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரும் தமேவ மாதா ச பிதத்வமேவ தமேவ பந்துஷ்ச சகத்வமேவ தமேவ வித்யாதிரவிடம் தமேவ தமேவ சர்வம் அமதேவ தேவ தமேவ சர்வம் குருதேவ தேவ ஹரி ஓம் வி ஜஸ்ட் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் தி எயிட்டீன் சாப்டர் ஆஃப் அஷ்டாவக்ர கீதா வேர் சேஜ் அஷ்டாவக்ர ப்ரொவைட்ஸ் அன் எக்ஸாஸ்டிவ் அனாலிசிஸ் ஆஃப் தி மேன் ஆஃப் ரியலைசேஷன் வாட்ஸ் தி நேச்சர் ஆஃப் ஹிம் ஹவு டஸ் இ மைண்ட் பர்சீவ் திங்ஸ் அண்ட் வாட் இஸ் த நேச்சர் ஆஃப் ரியலைசேஷன் ஸோ எசென்ஷியலி எ சம்மரி ஆஃப் தி தி எசன்ஸ் ஆஃப் பகவத்கீதா தட்ஸ் வேர் கிருஷ்ணா ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் அபவுட் தி தி ஜீவன் முக்தா சித பிரஜா அண்ட் தட் வாஸ் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ்ட் இன் தி செகண்ட் சாப்டர் அண்ட் எக்ஸாஸ்டிவ் டீட்டெயில்ஸ் ஃபார் ப்ரொவைடெட் when in response to the arjuna's question this how does he act how does he behave how does he transact in the world so the krishna provides a glimpse of the the gnani again in 12th chapter in the bhakti yoga again he talks about the the gnanam the is nothing but the knowledge and the highest knowledge is jivan mukti the one who has liberated by knowing who am i and what is this world and who is ishwara and that is discussed again in the 12th chapter and again in the 14th chapter there is a discussion about the gnani where he transcends the all the three karma three gunas sattva rajas tamo gunas and that is the gunatitaha that who is beyond the gunas is also described in the in the 14th chapter in the last in the in the ashtavakra gita the last chapter the 18th chapter which is exhaustive details about the about the nature of the world as he sees and about the nature of himself and now the next two chapters which are the last two chapters of the astavakra gita 19th and 20th the student janaka maharaj he explains from his reference about the nature of reality what he perceives after listening to the the teaching of his guru astavakra so this is a, a a summary of the the teaching of the whole astavakra the 19th and 20th chapter and this provides the essentially the whole gita in perspective on whole astavakra gita in perspective from the point of a student same thing we hear in the in the vivek chodamani after teaching is over the the there is an extempo discussed the talk about by the by the student who has realized the truth so he goes on description of that state and in the end he says because of your grace i am able to know that here janaka maharaj talks about from the absolute point and how he gained the knowledge and what is the nature of the knowledge and now from that perspective what's the nature of the world and what is the nature of jiva jagat and ishwara also we we'll start with the 19th chapter here the grandeur of the self itself is is provided and it says that the 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 mind so the well prepared for this can only realize the truth so that is is bahunam janma namante gyanavanam prapadyate so krishna says in this after many lives and lives a, a gnani realizes my realizes the the truth and that is what the uh, it means it requires a lot of preparation it's not that it's difficult but it's so direct and immediate that you miss the point because it's not an objective knowledge but it is an analysis of the very subject which cannot be analyzed by a subject it is a, a, a the vedanta provides only indicated a definition called lakshartas for us to contemplate on it 
and the contemplation or the or the capacity to contemplate and to see the truth that is self evident and it depends upon the nature of the mind because the mind is tuned to or uh, for life after life to look outside and through the sense organs and sense organs always go out to gather the information so it is paramukha that is outside looking only now that mind has to be has to be brought out and concentrated in the direction inwards to find out what is the nature of the truth inward outward is only with reference to the the mind level but the truth is all pervading and preparation of the of the mind is becomes an essential ingredient for for the sadhana so all sadhanas are not meant for realization all sadhanas are meant for purification of the mind so chittasya suddha e karmana to vastu upalabhyate so in the in the vikshuda mani says that for the uh, i think is atma bodha the shankara says that it's only for the purification of the mind the karma yoga bhakti yoga jnana yoga all yogas are only for purification of the mind so once the mind is purified and and one the mind purified mind listens to the scriptures and turn its attention to the truth that is being pointed out by vedanta then it becomes clear so this aspect is also in the uh, emphasized uh, as in by the by the tejo bindu upanishad that the swami chinmayan ji quotes yesham ruttihi samavruddha paripakva cha sapunah yesham ruttihi samavruddha paripakva cha sapunah te vai sad brahma brahma brahmatam te vai sad brahmatam प्राप्त नेतरे शब्दवादिन प्राप्त नेतरे शब्दवादिन वृत्ति सामवृद्ध परिपक्वा चा पुनः ते वै सद्रह्माता प्राप्त नेतरे शब्दवादिन सो हियर ए डिफरेंशिएटिंग बिट्वीन द टाइप ऑफ नॉलेज दिस दिस परोक्ष ज्ञान एंड अपरोक्ष ज्ञान Paroksha Jnana means indirect knowledge, and the Aparoksha Jnana, Aparoksha Jnana means immediate and direct knowledge. And classic example is the the tenth man story that everybody is familiar. That the ten uh, disciples of the teacher cross the cross the river, and a leader was appointed to make sure everybody crosses. and the leader wants to make sure that no one got drowned in the in the in the river so he assembles everybody and start counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that's all he counts and he says where is the 10th man so 10th man is missing so they again and again they count each one taking everybody counts only everybody that is there so mind is only looking out for the objects are for happiness and the mind is looking for for the 10th man outside and the 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 10th man is the one who is counting who is where are the 10 people so a teacher who was seeing all the tamasha he says i i know the 10th man is is cross the ocean cross the river and there is no need for you to cry because 10th man is there they want to know where is he is he here or is somewhere else he is right here and right now i am going to show you so he says they were all surprised but because they have faith in the in the in the old man's statement so they are ready to follow the instructions that are given by the the, ten, the by the teacher and he ask everybody assemble again and the leader starts counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so where is the 10th man we are still missing then his teacher says tatvamasi you are the 10th man so the the seeker himself is the sort so he is seeking all over all over the world where missing the very very the object of his search which is his own nature and that's what essentially we are looking for happiness all over the world 
from the morning to the evening, day in and day out, we want this, we want that. Why? Because that gives me happiness, this gives me happiness. So we are all searching for happiness and through sense enjoyment, through the enjoyment of objects, we want to get happiness even though there is no happiness in the object. Because if there is happiness in the object, same object should give happiness to everybody. Obviously, the, some people like this first thing in the morning, good hot cup of coffee is happiness. But other fellow says, that's a misery, I want tea. So, happiness not in the cup of coffee, because the more coffee is not more happiness. It's only one cup he wants, second cup he may tolerate, third cup it becomes a misery, because there's no happiness there. Happiness coming from internally from our own self, but you are looking outside because whenever the mind is no more longing, no more wanting, no more agitations that I want this, I want this and is already contented at least temporarily, then the happiness gets reflected. It is a contented mind that shows the happiness and we are looking that and interpret that the happiness is coming from the outside. So that is the the nature of our search for happiness and from whole life we are spending searching for happiness where it is not there and we are looking life after life after life because in the search for happiness we are getting uh, bound by the, uh, the, 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 the very happiness that we are getting from the objects they are they make us bind because we think from then on only every day cup hot cup of coffee i need for me to be happy so that is called bondage that's how the vasanas develop vasanas will bind you vasanas will cause desires desire will give you agitations agitations will they give you uh, uh, actions and actions may result in terms of temporarily happiness so in order to stop this the mind has to be prepared and in the Tejo Bindu Upanishad, he says, Esham Brutti Samavruddha. So, those who have purified the mind alone, Paripakva Chasapanaha, the mind is completely free from all agitations in the mind and cultured mind, Tevai Sat Brahmatam. So, they are the only ones who can recognize the Brahman. Brahman means infinite. Infinite cannot be recognized. Infinite recognition means Aham Brahmasmi, the knowledge can sink in. And Prapta Netare Sabdavadinaha. Not for the other people, na itare, from the do not come, na itare, na praptaha, sabdavadinaha. Those who can eloquently talk about Vedanta but not realize themselves, they do not get that happiness. So, we are talking about a paroksha jnanam and aparoksha jnanam. So, study of Vedanta as though it is study of physics or chemistry and all that, you can become a, a master of physics and also master of Vedanta. You can quote what the scriptures one from the other, one into other, different various scriptures and impress everybody. So, it's, that is walk by khari sabda jari shastra vakyana kausalam. So that walk away, the flow of uh, the speech comes out, they give the, the he call here, Sabda Vadinaha. They can give eloquent talks on, on Vedanta, at the same time, have they realized? So the question is, they understood, but they understood only as a thought. That's called parochanya, as though some object Brahman I understand, although the Vedanta I understand, because he can easily teach. But at the same time, have you realized, because they say that he is still looking for happiness, that means he is still looking for the, the, the happiness that comes from the objects, because the mind is still longing for sense objects, and that means the mind has not been prepared. That's why Sankaracharya says, says that you need Viveka, Vairagya, Samadhi, Shatka, Sampatti and Mumukshutvam. The fourfold qualifications are required for the, for the Vedanta to sink in. So, we understand Vedanta, people study Vedanta years and years and years but still not realize only because the mind has not been prepared. So, should they continue that? 
yes they should continue but very preparation and reflection and contemplation on the on the thing will itself purify the mind from then on and therefore srotavyaha mantavyaha nirijhasitavyaha tavya means one has to do it and until what until one understood this is rajivanishta that is sthita prajna abiding knowledge that means i know i am infinite aham brahmasmi means i am infinite even though the body mind intellect is finite even though the mind that says i am infinite is still finite but using the finite mind i say i am infinite not this mind is infinite mind is still limited body is still limited so we will using the body using the mind using the intellect i recognize that i am not the body not the mind not the intellect but that enlivens the body enlivens the mind that life principle that i am that is the pure satchidananda and that can only be done by paripakvam the maturity of the mind is required so until then sadhana goes on and if one uh, kicks the bucket in the process of not realizing he will be born in a conducive environment in the next life so nothing will be wasted but he will proceed from then on from wherever he left and continue the sadhana that's why krishna said bahu naam janma naam ante after many many lives until complete paripakvam the the food has to be cooked so mind has to be cooked completely until it recognizes there is no happiness anywhere other than my own self so the very seeking for happiness deprives one to get the absolute very seeking for moksha also deprives one but until i until i establish myself myself in the truth i had to keep searching for happiness only or searching for the truth so devai sad brahma brahma tam so they only recognize the etam brahma they only recognize the aham brahmasmi who have paripakva cha sapana who have purified the mind so with that background we'll take the first shloka of janaka maharaj in the 19 janaka o acha tatva vijnana sandamsham तत्व विज्ञान सन्दंशम आदाय हृदयोदरा आदाय हृदयोदरा नानाधपरामर्श नानाधपरामर्श शल्याधार कृतो मैया शल्याधार कृतो मैया तत्व विज्ञान सन्दंशम आदाय हृदयोदरा आदाय हृदयोदरा नानाधपरामर्श शल्योद्धार कृतौमयी कृतौमया सो तत्व विज्ञान सन्दंशम सो दंदंशम दिसेंशली द टूल्स और दि 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 पिंसर्स ऑफ द नॉलेज द टूल्स ऑफ द नॉलेज और और द मीन्स ऑफ नॉलेज दि दि हाउ वी कैन गेन नॉलेज सो यूजिंग द टूल्स ऑफ द नॉलेज tattva vijnanam and this knowledge of tools inquired for the nature of the truth so tattva means not the nature of the false the whole world so inquiring into the nature of the world i need a either physics or chemistry all the all that means biology zoology all allergies are essentially involved objective analysis that is analysis of the world and analysis of the world i need appropriate tools for that so to enquire into physics i have to prepare the mind in that direction to a physicist and a short physicist and can enquire in terms of the nature of the absolute truth in that so the preparation and the guidance and the phd all that in the direction for research is preparing the mind to enquire so that one can discover the truth about the nature of the reality so in each field there is a specialization and one prepare specialization nothing but preparing the mind to inquire in that field and that is essentially sandamsham that is the the tools of inquiry and tattva vijnanam but inquiry of which tools not the objective tools 
but objective tools i need a prepared intellect for that which is a sharp intellect that's called tichna buddhi tichna buddhi where i can dissect into this category or that category classify it codify it all that is because involved i am differentiating with the set of things that are different from each and that's how i put a the, the whole periodic table is a classification and codification all that is requires a sharp intellect which can divide sharp means like a razor sharp which can divide the the thing in order to different phylums different groups different categories so that i there is a distinction of this is different from the other aspect so that is what required for a for an objective science but for a subjective yer tattva vijnanam for vijnana of the tattvam tattvam means the basic essential truth or the fundamental truth and tat vijnanam that is tattva vijnanam tat is that which is that that is the absolute truth that cannot be objectified so absolute absolute truth doesn't come under any of the again some people think that quantum mechanics is going to is now uh, sophisticated to discover the absolute truth that is a hogwash hogwash means it's not nonsense because any mechanics any quantum mechanics are in doesn't matter what mechanics involves an objective objectification and consciousness cannot be objectified so there's a famous what they call uh, uh, schrodinger's cat problem if you go to google and ask for schrodinger's cat problem you can find all the information so it means the 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 experiment a thought experiment not real experiment a thought experiment was done where a, a cat was kept in the in the radiation cell and the it was irradiated and the question was posed is the cat alive or dead because of the radiation so the equations were solved and all the equations and the and the and the showing the equations can only tell you that the probability of what is a fact so it comes out that probability of the cat is alive or dead is 50% that means it can be alive or it can be dead but so that's all the results that quantum mechanics can give you it only can tell you a probability and the probability of its of this or that if there is a probability of two equal probability then you get 50% so so how do we know where well, cat cannot be half dead and half alive so when you open the door then you recognize that cat is alive or dead it cannot be half alive and half dead so until i open the door and see that means opening the door by itself doesn't mean i a conscious entity has to come into picture to see or to make a statement that cat is dead or cat is alive so that means a conscious entity has to enter into the equation and conscious entity can know that cat is alive or not how about the other fellows who are standing outside do they know or not they won't know until this conscious entity who examine informs them yes cat is alive cat is that means a conscious entity has to interact with the other conscious entities and other people who are listening should have a faith in the statement of this person because without faith then they that's called sabda pramana the other one is pratyaksha pramana because the fellow directly open and see without that he won't know until he sees until the consciousness enters into picture in the form of an enquirer the enquired cannot be established that means without the presence of a conscious entity existence of the object whether this or that cannot be determined so consciousness has to come in so therefore the whole universe is inert in in terms of but without the presence of the consciousness existence of the universe itself cannot be established but existence of the consciousness how are how are i going to establish so if you are sitting in a in a in a in a pitch dark room and says are you there if i ask says yes i am there so how do you know how do you know how can you prove that you are a, you are there says i don't need to prove i know i am there so how what means of knowledge is required to know that you are there i don't need any means of knowledge i don't need a direct perception i don't need a logical i don't need to have shabda pramana or any other means 
for me to know that I am there and I am a conscious entity. That means I am there, I am a conscious entity, so my existence and my consciousness is self-proven, that means it is self-revealing entity. But for anything else, just as in the cat in the showing a cat problem, consciousness has to enter in to establish the existence or even non-existence of an object there. So therefore, Tattva Vijnanam, so establishing the truth, how am I going to establish truth? So one needs to know what is the truth. Whole Vedanta is trying to point out in the direction, so we need a means of knowledge, a pramana, and that's what essentially sandamsam, the tools for inquiry. So I cannot use the objective tools to analyze the totality. Why? Because it includes the subject and subject cannot be analyzed by objective tools. I, don't, I cannot use a microscope or a telescope or any scope in order to know myself. So even quantum mechanics is a means of knowledge only, but it is inert. I cannot use the inert means to know who am I. So therefore, I need to inquire using the appropriate tools to inquire the tattvam. And for inquiring the subject, I don't have the appropriate tools. How is that? Because even any tool is only objectification, except Vedanta. Why? How can Vedanta tell you who you are or what is this world? It doesn't directly tell you, but it provides you a tool for you to inquire in the direction. So it points out the truth and for you to look at it, as we said, your mind has to be prepared. Just as the, for analysis of quantum mechanics, my mind has to be prepared for that. There are prerequisites. In the same way, there are prerequisites for inquiring into the tattvam. And what is a tattvam? Tattvam is that which is absolute truth. So what is the truth? So if you go to the God is truth. So, so what is God is truth? So what is the definition of God? God is the truth. So what is the truth? So truth is God. So it's essentially circular definition. You're not getting anything other than now you don't know two words. Either God and truth. So truth has to be defined. How do we define the truth? Oh, what, uh, what is proved by some pratyaksha pramana, that alone is truth. That may be truth from the court, but what exactly, anything that I see cannot be the subject I am. I don't need to see it. So what is the means of knowledge for me to know who I am? So why should I know who I am? Because I am taking myself what I am not as I am and transacting in the world and causing getting into problems. So to solve a problem only I need to know who I am. Not that I need to know who am I just for getting another PhD. So who am I inquiry or what is this world? All that need to be inquired properly to recognize the fact that my I am I'm putting in the wrong step by trying to take myself what I am not. Because anybody who says, who are you? He will say, I am this, 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 this. So he gives you name, fame, biodata, all that, nothing but some this, which is different from other people's this. So this is an object and whereas I am a subject. So I cannot be this. At the same time, everybody defines I am this. That is called Ahankara. So this inquiry is, who am I without objectifying so I don't need to have proper tools and that's why Vedanta becomes a proper tool and that's what Tattva Vijnana Samdhamsa. So using the appropriate tool, appropriate tool is Vedanta. How do we use Vedanta? Vedanta itself tells you. Says, Srotavyaha, Mantavyaha, Nirijhasi Tavyaha. You have to inquire by listening to the scriptures. So how do you say that Vijnana Artham sa Gurumeva Abhigachet Samit Panihi Sotriyam Brahmanishtam For that only you approach a teacher. Don't read Vedanta yourself. You may become an expert in the Sabda Jalam, but that will not help you. So that is the understanding one requires. So you need a proper teacher and the teacher only points out in the direction for you to think properly. So it's not something he is going to show you this is Brahman or you are Brahman in this way. He tells you Tattva must see, you are that, I am what, that what. That was being defined in the in the chapter that the pure existence, existence alone was there before creation. That existence itself appeared as many and you are that Tattva must see. So it's not that somebody created, you yourself created into many, become many. So that 
truth is that is, is you and that is being inquired. So truth is what? That existence alone was there before creation. And what is the existence? Existence is that because of which everything else exists. And Krishna defines existence as that law of conservation. Nasato vidyate bhavo, na bhavo vidyate sataha. That which exists cannot, can never cease to exist. That which is non-existent can never come into existence. It's law of conservation, just as matter can neither be created nor destroyed. Similarly, existence cannot be created nor destroyed. Nabudeti, Astameti. So what is that existence? That because of which everything exists, but at the same time I cannot see existence because it is one without a second. That is, it is infinite. And how do I know? Because I have to contemplate in the direction that is pointed out and you are that existent consciousness. So we go into more details of this chapter because the first loka provides the basis on which the Janaka makes the further statements and once it is clear then the rest of it is more or less the, the essence of the previous chapter that Savakra covered. We will stop with this and continue with the sloka 1 tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om